Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and it's been a couple of days. For you it might be just the next video. It's been a couple of days that I've recorded and let's get back started with the Golang series. In this video we're going to talk about methods and yes I know in the last video we talked about functions. Not quite like uh, too much in depth but enough that we can get started in the later on series and in fact you'll not need too much after this one. So this is all we got but we now need to talk about methods as well. First let's go ahead and create a new folder for that which is 16. Quite far. So we're gonna go for methods and just like always we got a new main file up here. Let's go ahead and say main.go, open this up into integrated terminal, and yes, of course, go mod in it. Methods, there we go, nice and easy. Now one thing that, yes, I of course remember that we last time talked about functions and now we are talking about methods. There is not much of a big difference when we use regular things in just wrapped up they we call them as functions but when these functions actually go into the classes we like to term them as method they are exactly the same but in the same case uh, almost same case happens in the golang as well but since we don't have classes we have structs we need to bring our functions into these structs so that we can call them methods yep that's simple and let's go ahead and take help from some of the previous files so we're going to go into uh, the place where we talked about the structs. So let me just go ahead and find my structs main.go and we'll be borrowing the exact same code. So go ahead, copy all of this from the my structs and we're going to go ahead and paste this one. Uh, shouldn't be any problem. Let's just save this. This all works fine and we have used all the methods and struct and all of that. Now let's see how we can define all these things. And just to give you a little bit more, uh, you can also get uh, something like um, one age just giving you some random example and instead of saying one age with a capital O you can go ahead and say one age and then this uh, particular uh, property one age is not going to be exportable because it is not first letter is capital so yeah these kinds of things happens a lot so just take care of that now let's talk about how we're going to define method it is super super easy the function signature changes just a tiny bit and it's super easy to work on with so let's go ahead and define a function just like we have defined below or above the struct doesn't really matter. In this case, what happens is you go ahead and put up a parenthesis first. I'll tell you about why in a minute. And then let's just say we want to have a simple uh, get status. Make sure the first letter is capital. If you are planning to export this method, if you are not planning that, that's okay. You can keep it a uh, lowercase. We won't be passing up any arguments right up here. This is what it is. Now, when you make this function a method, that means it should be a part of this all struct, then obviously you need to pass on a struct to it you pass on the entire struct or a property into it that's up to you but in this case we are going to pass on the entire struct so that we can just go ahead and do that so we'll be passing on a u for a user and this will be of type of user and that's it now it is it can be called as method that's simple now let's go ahead and print the status that whether the user's status is online or not because instead of asking like this that uh, what are the details and is he active or not or his status is true or not we just want to have a simple method so that we can just call this method and ask it sounds simple let's go ahead and do a fumpt and in this case we are going to go ahead and just directly answer this something like this is user active and then we are going to use the same uh, object that we have passed on the struct is also creating an object so let's go ahead and say that we will be saying u dot and i can access all the properties so get status now instead of just going every single time u dot status i can just call this method and probably there are 10 different things that i'm doing up here so i can go ahead and do all of that okay so now the, that the method is all ready i need to just go ahead and uh, use that method so in this case already in the last time we have created that and since i don't need to do fumpt because this method is already doing me fumpt print i'm going to go ahead and say hey get status and that's it that's pretty much it all i have to do let's go ahead and try to run this one and say go run main.go and uh, yep it says uh, is user active which is true so that is the case Let's go ahead and use a slash n up here because it is bothering me a little bit. Okay, let's try it one more time. And there we go, is user active, which is true. Now this is not it, you can do a variety of manipulation in case you have knowledge about getters and setters. Yes, you are totally allowed to do that. Let's go ahead and try to do something similar to that. 
Uh, in this case, we are actually providing the email, whoever is asking, but we can actually manipulate this as well based on the method. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's define another function. And again, we are gonna use or pass on an object, which is of type user, if I can write that correctly. And then we are gonna say that this method gives you a new mail. Uh, I don't know why, but it just gives you that. Okay, so the first thing that it's gonna do is I'm gonna manipulate the property. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this user will have an email, but I'm gonna go ahead and provide a new email to this guy, uh, probably something like test at the rate go.dev. I'm pretty sure this email doesn't exist. If it exists, that's a pure coincidence. And then I can go ahead and return the fumpt to get this uh, email. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to say email of this user is, and let's go like that. And we're gonna say you dot, dot email, if I can write that, <laughs> there we go. Okay, now a couple of interesting thing that you should really, really be worried about here. Let's go ahead and run that so that we can actually verify that. We're gonna say Hitesh dot, and this time I won't have a new mail. Let's go ahead and see what value it actually gives us. Let's go ahead and run this program first to see a couple of strange stuff. Now notice here it says that, okay, the new email of the user is test at the rate godev, but remember, we actually passed you an email of Hitesh at godev, but now, thanks to this method, this is the new email. But the bigger question even is that, okay, here I was able to see that if I run this property of hitesh.email, I'm still getting there. But when I run this method, does this actually change the original property or not? So for this, we can use this line up here and we can print this line up here because instead of me saying everything, let's go ahead and see this in live action. Let's go ahead and clean this screen and run this one up here. Now remember very carefully, here it says Hitesh details are, and I'm getting my old email, the original one. Then I use this method and if case you can see up here that this mail actually manipulates the email and prints us the email that we are getting. But on this line here it says name is Hitesh and email is Hitesh at the red code dev. So this clears that whenever you pass on these objects or the structs, it actually passes on a copy. This brings us again to the point that why pointers has been designed. This is a common practice that when you pass along the things into multiple functions, usually a copy of that function, a copy of that object is being passed along. And thus pointer comes in. If you want to really pass on the original object, you should be passing up the reference of it or a pointer to that. And we will be doing that definitely when we uh, work on mutex and stuff, we will be passing on the actual reference and not these copies of that. But you don't need to worry about that right now that how we pass on the pointers or don't worry, worrying is the bad thing. Uh, just uh, have some patience and I'll walk you through with all of them. This is it, this is all what we need to discuss right now and you should be happy for that. If you are enjoying this video series, let me know in the comment section. It always helps me to make more videos and I'm gonna surely catch you up in the next video.